Always happy to be joined by Milton MP Adam Vancouverden. Good afternoon, Adam. Hi, Jason. Nice to be here with you. Finally in Milton, we've been joining each other from uh, when I've been in Ottawa, but I'm happy to be back here in the constituency office in Milton, Ontario. Yeah, there you go. And I mean, that's where we're going to begin. Of course, you've wrapped up the second session of the 44th Parliament. Uh, what are some of the highlights for you from this past session? It's been a very productive uh, fall session, the 44th Parliament. The second session of the 44th Parliament has been has been great. Um, just, you know, off the top, just a, a point of condolence. Uh, we lost one of our colleagues last Monday uh, on the, the third to last day of the second session. That was the Honourable Jim Carr. He's a, an amazing member of Parliament, a great mentor for lots of younger MPs uh, like myself. He was only 71. He died far too soon after a battle with with cancer and uh, his memorial was in Winnipeg. He was the MP for Winnipeg South Center. Uh, just an amazing guy. And uh, I just wanted to send his his family, friends uh, and team, as well as his staff and his whole constituency, really, um, some condolences because uh, it's a it was real, really a tragic loss. Um, uh, but I actually got to attend Jim's second or his last speech in the House of Commons, where he he brought forward his private members bill for a green economy for the prairie provinces. And uh, it's a very comprehensive bill, basically instructs ministers uh, to, uh, to to consult on greening the, the prairie economy across the prairie provinces. And he read, uh, he didn't read anything, actually, he spoke uh, extemporaneously on the on the bill, uh, the, the, he called it the work of, of his career. Um, and it passed through the Senate. And then just a couple of days later, he, he passed away from cancer. Um, very, very sad uh, way to, to end the session. Um, but looking back on the session itself, it was extremely productive. You know, we passed a, a historic dental care bill uh, for kids under 12 who aren't insured for their dental. Um, that'll support over half a million kids in Canada in the next year, the next two years, actually. Uh, we brought forward dental supports for renters, for families who already received the Canada uh, rental support program, the uh, the benefit. There, there'll be an additional $500 for those families, which is extremely helpful, particularly this time of year. We also passed a bill to double the HST GST rebate that people get. Um, it's uh, that's supporting uh, 11 million families across the country. So we're we're acknowledging not just acknowledging the fact that times are tough economically, uh, that uh, inflation has has been really really challenging for a lot of families, but we're bringing forward real financial actions and tools that is currently supporting families. We're talking about $10 a day childcare or getting there, right? A lot of the families here in Milton have already started to receive uh, rebates or credits towards their, their childcare. One family in particular reached out to me recently and told me that they're saving $900 a month. Uh, and that's because of a direct subsidy from the federal government, making sure that childcare is affordable so that parents can get back to work uh, as soon as they want, or as soon as they would like to. Um, in addition to that, you know, that we've, we've increased the Canada child benefit. We've made it tax free. Uh, we're increasing affordable housing across the country. Uh, we also eliminated all the interest on student loans, on federal student loans, the Canada Student Loans Program, forever, not just on this year or next year or the previous years, forever, the interest is gone. So uh, we're not just acknowledging the fact that uh, that financially times are tough right now and inflation is making um, making it tough to to put food on the table. We're finding solutions. And one of the things actually that I know you've mentioned in the past, uh, but was also done in the fall session was the athletic or the athlete assistance program for mental health. I always like to talk to you about things like this, you know, having the pedigree of you know, being an Olympic athlete. Is this something near and dear to you as well? Like, was there a time in your career, which was very successful being an athlete that you did struggle? Yeah, absolutely, for sure. And this is a program that I think is absolutely uh, essential. Um, you know, athletes get good support in Canada. Um, they don't all get benefits though. And, and even a lot of benefits programs don't include enough for psychotherapy and mental health support. So what we've done is acknowledge that there are, uh, that being an athlete and practicing sports at a really high level can be a very stressful endeavor. And we want to make sure that when athletes are struggling a little bit, they've got some support. And so we're partnering with game plan, the Canadian Olympic committee, we're enhancing the athlete assistance program, which as you pointed out, I benefited from for almost two decades and including, uh, about $2,500 a year. I think it adds up to for, for athletes so they can access uh, some mental health supports. It's important to recognize that most of the activity that the federal government does on the sports side is to support our national teams, you know, people that compete for Canada. So that's what that money is for. Uh, but it also, there's half of it for athletes and about half of it for, for coaches uh, and, and national sport organizations as well. So 
you know, it's part of our effort to support the mental health health of athletes. But at the same time, we've stood up something called the Office of the Sport Integrity Commissioner back in June uh, to make sure that sport continues to be safe. You know, we want there to be training available. Um, there should be scrutiny. Uh, sport organizations should demonstrate and have to demonstrate that their sporting environments are free of abuse and harassment discrimination. And that's what we've done. We've made our sport system quite a lot safer, uh, while at the time, same time providing supports for athletes when they really need it. It all sounds great. And, you know, a lot of the things that you touched on earlier as well uh, have to do with inflation. And inflation was a major buzzword for 2022. I now want to look forward, though, because we've kind of done the year end roundup. But going forward to 2023, oh, what plans do you see there for the federal government continuing to help combat the rise in the cost of living? It's a really challenging uh, question, to be honest, because we want to, to be there for families, make sure that we're getting them the supports they need, uh, while at the same time recognizing that when a government puts more money into the economy like that, sending out checks, um, whether that was for essential programs like the wage subsidy or CERB or others, um, it buoys the economy and adds to growth, and that growth creates more inflation. So uh, right now we're seeing you know, the inflation rates coming back down a little bit. They have been decreasing over the last couple of months. That's what we would like to continue to see. Um, and that's why it's it's actually caused, that, that slowdown has been caused by the increase in interest rates by the Bank of Canada. Uh, I would love to see for those interest rates to come back down, to sort of see a soft landing so that we can avoid a recession. Um, I think most Canadians would. But at the same time, you know, a lot of that news has been kind of gloomy. Uh, I think it's important to recognize some of the bright spots in the in the economy right now. Uh, there's the highest ever employment rate in Canada, the lowest employment ever in history. Pretty good, uh, you know, small but 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 steady growth uh, in the economy over the last couple of months, which has been really good to see. Um, oftentimes I'm asked, you know, what's the best protection against uh, poverty? And it's a healthy and thriving jobs market. And right now it's a really good time to be looking for a job because, uh, you know, if anything, there's a little bit of a worker shortage, uh, which is a challenging prospect for the economy. And there's more on that uh, in, in the most recent statement from the Minister of Immigration on, on making sure that we're bringing uh, more people to Canada uh, who would like to come here and start a life, uh, work in, in uh, their chosen fields. We also want to support Canadians who are already here who have foreign credentials, say if they're a foreign trained nurse or doctor uh, or dentist, we want to make sure that these people can work in those chosen fields because, you know, every Canadian's ridden in a taxi cab or an Uber uh, with, uh, with you know, somebody who's an engineer, a doctor or, or a judge back uh, in the country where, where they grew up in. And we want to accelerate the path to foreign credentialing uh, so that as many people in Canada can be earning uh, their their potential and as much money as possible so that they can continue to thrive. Um, but it's really important to recognize some of the bright spots as well. And that, that very high uh, employment rate bodes very well for, for next year, for 2023. We're going into a new year with, with record low unemployment. And actually, as a result of the child care plan that you mentioned earlier, the, the Financial Post wrote recently that the, the record high female engagement in uh, Canada's job force economy uh, is as a result of one of the smartest ever uh, decisions and, and thank our, our colleague down in Burlington, Karina Gould, for bringing forth a child care subsidy uh, that supports so many families right here in Milton with, with one of the lowest, uh, Milton has one of the lowest ages demographically across Canada. So there's lots of little kids in child care. And that is great. And that will obviously continue on into 2023. And we look forward to chatting you with you in 2023 as well. Uh, have a great holiday and uh, we'll speak with you in the new year. Thanks so much, Adam. Thanks very much, Jason. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Happy New Year to everybody. Look forward to seeing you in January. 